Batman Under the Red Hood movie review. So yeah, it's a comic book movie. Well, what can I say? We, we do some highbrow stuff on this channel and we do some lowbrow stuff on this channel. Uh, so this is a direct to DVD animated comic book movie. It's, it's, it's a guilty pleasure and I'm not really gonna try and defend it. Uh, other than to say, uh, as a comic book geek, I've always been fascinated by the more convoluted aspects of comic book continuity. I, I don't know what it is about geeks and continuity. Uh, it fascinates us. I, I, I don't know why. You, you know, there's some sort of evolutionary reason why males of a certain type just get fascinated with continuity in fictional universes. I, I don't know, but uh, wh whatever it is, uh, I, I was very interested in this in my youth, still, I, I mean, I've largely outgrown it now, but, but still maintain somewhat of an interest in the convoluted continuity of comic book stories. So, uh, Batman Under the Red Hood, if you're not familiar, t takes up maybe one of the more convoluted aspects of Batman continuity. So. Uh, this goes back to the story of Batman and Robin. Now, I mean, what fascinates me is how this just goes on through decades, if you want to trace back the story. I mean, Batman originally took on Robin as his protege back in the 1930s. Uh, and then in the 1980s, that particular Robin, Dick Grayson, grew up and assumed his own mantle as Nightwing. So then there was a second Robin that uh, Batman took on called Jason Todd, who got killed by the Joker, and I believe it was 1989, uh, which, or 1990, somewhere around then. It, it was a big deal when I was a kid. I mean, I remember everybody in sixth grade talking about it. Like, did, did you hear they killed off Robin? Uh, we... I actually thought that was the original Robin um, because I wasn't reading the comic books at the time. I was just hearing about it from friends. And the publicity around the event, they, they made it seem like it was the original Robin. Uh, but it, it wasn't the original Robin. The original Robin had graduated into a different identity, Dick Grayson at that time. It, it was a replacement Robin. So it wasn't maybe that big of a deal, but they, they advertised it. Uh, and, and this was back in the days when comic books were still big deals. I mean, these, these days nobody actually cares what happens in the comic books, right? I mean, comic books are big intellectual properties in terms of the movies, but uh, nobody actually cares what happens in the print versions anymore, I think. I don't know. Let, let me know if I'm wrong. Uh, and Jason Todd, for a long time was supposedly an infamous example of a comic book character who was killed and actually stayed dead. Until he didn't. He got resurrected in 2005 and 2006 under the new identity, the Red Hood. I actually didn't, I wasn't reading comic books by 2005, 2006, but I was vaguely aware of it, kind of followed some, some of the chatter on the internet and stuff like that. So when, when I found out they were making an animated movie about the Red Hood, like Jason Todd coming back from the dead, I thought, okay, this, this is such a ridiculous, convoluted story that, I'm, I'm number one, I'm surprised they actually made a movie out of it. I mean, it was an animated direct-to-DVD movie, but still. Uh, and two, this sounds so silly, I've just got to check it out. Um, and, and so I did. So the movie starts off, with the Joker beating to death Jason Todd with a crowbar. With a crowbar. Um, so right from the beginning, you can see why this movie is rated PG-13, even though it's a cartoon. It's a very violent graphic scene to start off a cartoon movie with. Now, if you're familiar with this iconic moment from the comic books, then you know that it's straight out of the comic books in, in the original Death in the Family in 1989. That is how Jason Todd was killed, was beaten to death by the crowbar. But I think there's a difference in medium. Like, when it was in the comic book, it was a series of images, you know, st still not, move not moving images. And it maybe had a different emotional impact. When you're watching this played out in moving animation, 
uh, and you're hearing kind of the bone crunching swacks of the crowbar, uh, it struck me as having a little bit more of a brutality than, uh, or a lot more of a brutality than it did in the comic book page, which, you know, I mean, I guess it's fine. I, I don't want to play censorship here, but, um, at the same time, I, I, I go to comic book movies for more escapist entertainment. Seeing somebody beaten to death with a crowbar and kind of hearing the wax right off the gate strikes me as a little bit of, a, of the wrong tone to set here. Okay, th that complaint aside, shortly after Jason Todd is killed, we cut to five years later when a new mysterious supervillain, the Red Hood, is trying to intimidate Gotham's existing crime lords. Now, if you've got two brain cells functioning, you know exactly that the Red Hood is connected to Jason Todd because they show the death of Jason Todd and then immediately they show the Red Hood running around. Uh, I mean, if you have any idea of how storytelling is connected at all. Um, which surprised me that they weren't even going to hide it or try and tease out the mystery of who is the Red Hood. But, you know, I, I guess they figure the only people who are going to rent this movie are comic book geeks. And comic book geeks already know the Red Hood is. They've been following it in the comics. Uh, still, even though the audience knows what it is from right at the moment, uh, it takes a while before Batman figures it out. There's several chase scenes and fight scenes between Batman and Jason Todd and Nightwing. Uh, Nightwing is, uh, makes a few cameo appearances before Batman finally figures it, everything out. There's a lot of fight scenes in this movie, which, you know, is based on a comic book, so okay. Uh, because it was a direct-to-budget DVD movie, I was expecting, like, a lot of bad fight scenes, like a lot of lazy chore uh, choreography. Um, but I thought the choreography in these fight scenes was pretty intense. Like somebody actually took their time with them. Uh, and I, I mean, I know it's all animated, but they, they, they must have had to plan out the choreography in advance, write it all down and stuff like that. It was well done, and yet, by the end of the movie, I was getting sick of it. I, I was trying to put my finger on exactly what went wrong. I thought, okay, these are all decent fight scenes. Why am I so bored at the end of the movie? And I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I, I've, I've worked out this theory, which is... I compared it to Batman Mask of the Phantasm, uh, which is like the classic Batman animated movie. Now, th that one got a theatrical release, so maybe it's not fair to compare them. But Batman the, the Mask of the Phantasm did a good job of really mixing up the styles of action. Uh, so that there was one scene where one character was riding a motorcycle and they were fighting. There was another scene where they were fighting on top of an airplane. There was another scene where a character had a jetpack and they were fighting. There was another scene where there's this giant suction engine. You know, like the set pieces and the, the, the different ways that those action scenes were, were thought out was, was really inventive, and I think that's what made Batman Mask of Phantasm such a great movie. Whereas this movie, even though each individual fight scene, the choreography was quite good, by the end of the movie I, w I was just kind of getting sick of it, because each one is just kind of two people fighting on the street. Uh, there, there's, there's no kind of upping, upping the ante. Uh, the plot... The plot I thought was decently complex, at least by the standards of a comic book movie. There are several different players involved with different motives. Batman is fighting the Red Hood. The Red Hood is fighting the Black Mask. The Black Mask is trying to establish control of the other Gotham crime lords. Uh, and then there's the Joker, who's just changing alliances as it suits him. I, I thought it was interesting, more or less, if you're a comic book geek, you might want to check it out. If you're not a comic book geek, don't bother.